Number 5. Ali Reza M. A 37-year-old Iranian man convicted on drug charges was sentenced to the death penalty and hung in Bujnard prison in the northeastern part of Iran in October of 2013. Known only as Ali Reza M., the man hung from a noose for 12 minutes before being pronounced dead. The next day, when his family went to see the body, they were dumbfounded when they noticed he was still breathing. In the craziest of ironies, Iranian authorities decided to wait for the man to feel better before they could hang him again. No, really. A judge reportedly said his execution would go ahead once medical staff confirmed his health condition was good enough. This, of course, outraged Amnesty International, who deemed that the execution be dropped. Almost a year and a half later, in February of 2015, the father of two, who'd been arrested for possessing a kilo of methamphetamine, was sentenced to life in prison. Number 4. Romel Broom Another botched execution was Romel Broom's in 2009. Broom was even the first person ever to survive an execution by lethal injection, a quasi-miracle because lethal injections are designed to be as quick, painless, and error-free as possible. Well, he proved that nothing is infallible. Broom was convicted of kidnapping, rape, and murder, and has always contested the charges. DNA tests couldn't prove 100% that he had committed the crimes he was accused of, but he was nonetheless sentenced to execution by lethal injection. For two hours, the executioners tried to find a suitable vein for an IV line, hitting bone and muscle in the process, but never piercing a vein that didn't immediately collapse, basically torturing the death row inmate. Finally, he was sent back to his cell and granted a week's reprieve. During that time, Broom's lawyers declared he'd suffered cruel and unusual punishment and began a larger movement to change the lethal injection laws in the United States. That case gave them arguments that to kill Broom would be to destroy key evidence in the suit. In March 2016, only a few days ago, the Ohio Supreme Court, in a 4-3 ruling, decided that Broom could undergo a second execution. Number 3. Anne Green in 1640, when she was 22 years old, Anne Green was working as a servant in a manor house in Oxfordshire, England, and allegedly became pregnant with the housemaster's grandson. Well, since she wasn't married, Green hid the pregnancy and eventually miscarried, choosing to hide the fetus in some ashes and dirt. Back in the day, a single woman who concealed a pregnancy or stillbirth could be accused of infanticide. Even though midwives attested to the fact that the fetus would not have been viable, Green was still condemned to death for her child's murder. She was hanged in 1650 and beaten afterwards to ensure she was really dead. Yet, Green was still bleeding when her body was sent to the coroner for dissection. It's believed she soon got better and was granted a full pardon. Well, how about that? Number 2. Wenceslo Mogel On March 18, 1915, 25-year-old Wenceslo Mogel was arrested for suspicion of having taken part in the Mexican Revolution. Mogel was immediately sentenced without trial and ordered to be executed by firing squad. During the execution, Mogel was shot eight times before the usual coup de grace, the ninth shot, which is the final bullet shot in the head at point-blank range to ensure death. Miraculously, Mogel survived and was given the nickname El Fusilado, which means the executed one. 22 years later, in 1937, Mogel was invited to Ripley's Believe It or Not radio show, and he lived on in 1975, a few days before his 85th birthday. Later on, the British band Chumbawamba, famous for its one-hit wonder, I Get Knocked Down, wrote a beautiful song about his story, called appropriately, El Fusilado. Number 1. Ewan MacDonald First in our list is one of the weirdest cases of twisted karma we've ever seen. In 1752, Englishman Ewan MacDonald got into an argument with fellow Newcastle citizen Robert Parker. When Parker tried to leave, McDonald followed him and stabbed him in the throat, no less. McDonald was found guilty of murder and hanged on the town moor in Newcastle. As usual back in the day, his body was sent to where most bodies of executed criminals went, to the dissection auditorium of the local medical school. Obviously, corpses were very valuable to surgeons because they were the only legal way to study anatomy. You can imagine the surgeon's surprise when he walked into the room and found a confused McDonald sitting up on the operating table. You'll never guess what happened next. The dissecting surgeon grabbed a mallet, struck McDonald's head, and finished the hangman's job. And proof that karma's a bit. It seems that a few years later, that murderous surgeon died when his own horse kicked him in the head.